So the first thing I'm going to do is apply pressure through the fuel inlet barb, and that's going to do two things. It's going to test whether the barb to carburetor body joint is good in here, or whether it's leaking. And it's also going to test the validity of the needle, which is inside the float bowl in this chamber. I use a Mighty Vac 8500. I'll pop a link into the description, but uh, you can use just a cheap hand pump if you have one. <clears throat> we turn the carb upside down. I'm going to add in around about 7 psi, and it should hold. In this case, you can see that needle is dropping right back down. So it could either be the needle's not sealing, or it could be the joint here. I'll take a little bit of soapy water, spray it onto that joint, pump it back up again and see if it bubbles. And it's not at all. So we know that the issue in this case is that the needle is not sealing inside the carburetor. We'll come on to that shortly. And now we'll test the fuel shutoff valve that we have here. So at the moment, it's currently open. Now if I push it around 90 degrees, I'm going to do exactly that same thing. I'm going to put pressure in. I'm just going to double check up to around about 7 psi that it's holding. And it is. So that's all good. What I will do is just pop this top cover off to show you how it works. My advice, though, is the less you fiddle with shutoff valves, the more reliable they are. I tend to find rubber componentry, once it's been in place for a little while, doesn't like to be unsettled. And when you do, you can actually introduce problems. So my advice is, if it's holding, then we'll check, of course, that it's clean. But uh, don't be tempted to start pulling them off, just like the bowl gasket. My advice is, don't pull bowl gaskets off. Leave them in place. So we have a plate. Under that is a wave washer. See if we don't lose that. I'll tap, and then we have the valve underneath here. This is the rubber componentry that I recommend you leave well alone. Give it a bit of a clean in here if it's dirty. In this case, it actually looks quite good. Certainly go in there and give it a clean, but don't start trying to lift that rubber seal up there. I think you're going to end up causing more problems than you're going to solve. Because it's clean, I'm going to put this part back together and move on to the next step. Note with the bowl, they have two nuts on it. One is a bowl drain, and you loosen that off to release all the fuel out inside the bowl if you're going to put this into storage. And the other one is a nut just to hold the bowl onto the carb body. And if either one of those two leak, they've got a little washer on them, so you can just replace that. Yeah, this is really bad. Now, had someone have drained this bowl before they put it into storage, this would be shiny and clean. We wouldn't have this issue. So it's really important to take that into account. Always drain out your float bowl if you're not going to use that piece of equipment for a month or more, I'd suggest. So inside here, we have a float a pivot pin, and the float holds a needle and a spring. So we're going to pull this pin off. Now, if it's a bit stuck, don't force it. Try and clean it slightly with some brake cleaner or carb cleaner, and that will just uh, break down the fuel that's gumming everything up. So here is the pin. We'll put that to one side. We'll remove our float, and our needle should come out in one piece. And all that little spring does is takes up the clearance between the needle and the float. So, uh, yeah, taking up that lash. We'll have a quick look now. If we just slide this needle off. There we go. If I get a hand lens, I'm going to show you exactly what's going on. It's covered in debris. And in this case, it doesn't look like there is a ridge that's formed. Over time, what can happen halfway down the needle basically between the tip and the base, is a ridge can form. Now, it's not such an issue in terms of stopping the needle from being able to seal. It's more just about its inability to meter fuel efficiently. This taper is really, really important. So if you have got a notable ring running around the end of that needle, it's probably worth replacing. And uh, that's quite cheap and quite easy to do. This case, it looks really good, other than the fact that it's really dirty. So of course, we're going to give that a clean as well. And the spring is here, just sitting on the back. And that's just held captive by the float itself. The float, of course, really important that it does float. These can form cracks over time, especially the metal ones. So what we'll do is I'll pop this into a little bit of water, just make sure that it does float over the next sort of five minutes that we're working on this carb. We can come back and then we can double check it. Take into account that if these don't float, if they do take on water, you can, to a certain extent, repair them 
but what you might find is you'll actually change the buoyancy of the float and that will affect the amount of fuel that's uh, sitting in the float bowl. Ideally, if it's damaged, replace it, um, but you could, of course, give it a go, you've got nothing to lose. So inside this main tube here, we have a main jet, which looks really clogged up, and then we have an emulsion tube as well. So we're gonna pop those out. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver in here. It might come, it might not. Yeah, it's really bad. This is only brass, so I don't want to break it. I'm going to put a little bit of um, carburetor cleaner in there. Hopefully that will help to break down some of the vinylized fuel. Don't overdo it. Better to go slow and steady. We also have a float bowl gasket here. I'm not going to upset that just yet. It might need to be replaced if it's not sealing. Here we go. Didn't take much, just enough to break that seal. So first will come your main jet. This is where uh, your fuel will be supplied. So full throttle operation. Everything gets harder when uh, it's covered in gummy fuel. <laughs> Give me a sec. My little pliers. I guess at least it's a real world example of what can happen. Come on. There we go. There it is. So, yeah, this is your main jet. In this case, if I put a light behind it, I can tell you already, but if I put a light behind it, you uh, should be able to see a little hole. I can't, that's fully blocked. So that's gonna to need to be cleaned as well. And then we have an emulsion tube. Not all emulsion tubes come out. Let me show you this one. If we gently press from the inside with a screwdriver, hopefully it will come out. No, again. again, don't force anything like this. Little bit of carb cleaner goes a long way to easing these to come out. There we go. And that is your emulsion tube. The role of the emulsion tube is, well, it's the first part of combining fuel and air together. Fuel runs up through the center of this tube, all the way through the top, which goes out into the venturi of the carburetor, the taper of the carb. And air is actually coming in through each one of these very fine drillings at that same time. And that's all happening just before atomization, before it goes into the uh, body of the carburetor. Now, I mentioned how air passes through this emulsion tube, and that air comes in through this drilling here. So what we want to do is to spray some fuel through here, or carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner, and just double check that it is actually entering this chamber here, where the emulsion tube sits. I'm going to use one of my little press hole bottles. I'm going to place that in there. And you can see it is coming out like so, out the bottom. So that shows me that it is clear and the air can go through into this chamber and through the emulsion tube. And then of course we have another drilling here, which is for our pilot fuel supply, which we're gonna move on to next. Let me just clean this mess up. Just before we move on to this pilot side, I'm gonna quickly cover the uh, seat for the needle. Inside here, is what we call the seat. And uh, if I can find a torch. And it must be clean, free of debris, and not damaged. Now, it does depend on the model of the carburetor. Sometimes they're plastic, sometimes they're metal. In this case, it's a plastic, and uh, it looks really, really clean. But um, of course, it's very hard to see, especially down such a fine hole. So again, we'll just spray some fuel, a little bit of, in this case, alcohol. And we go through the fuel inlet barb, and it should come out of that hole that I was just saying now, which it is. So we know that that's okay. 
Uh, we'll move on to the pilot side now. The pilot side is when the piece of equipment is idling or not under any load or minimal load. Fuel comes in through this air drilling. It's a metered air drilling. It's a little brass jet in there and it picks up fuel through this little pilot jet which is inside this plastic chamber. It's then metered by this screw and it actually comes out on the inside of the carburetor and you can see we have the main idle drilling which is metered by that fine drilling and jet there and behind it you have the progressive idle drilling there for off idle acceleration so as you accelerate those little holes begin to be exposed supplying more fuel so that you don't get that lean bog we'll take this idle speed adjustment screw out don't worry too much about its position because we can easily adjust that on the mower or the piece of equipment that you're running i'm going to gently prise up on this Pilot. Yeah, might need a smaller one. Or have we got it? I think we got it. There it is. And there'll be a little O ring on here. It's important that that O ring is present, not damaged, not flat. At the end, it's going to be probably be, probably be blocked. Sorry, guys, my phone died. I lost my trail of thought. We uh, had just taken the pilot jet out, which is fine. We'll just check all the drillings for the pilot circuit. So the first one, we're going to use a little bit of brake cleaner goes through the metered air drilling at the front that should come through the middle which it is and then we've got drilling in the base on the floor that will come out of here which it is and then last but not least the tricky one is to test the idle drilling and the progressive idle drillings behind it can you see those little holes we were talking about earlier they need to be clear and then you can see the end of the uh, low speed screw is protruding out and we just want to make sure that all of those are flowing in this case some brake cleaner it is tricky to get to might be tricky to get on camera but there we go so we know all of those are clear they're running really nicely the last stage now is the low speed screw this meters fuel and air your engine at uh, low speed running so idle and just off idle basically now this is designed to break this little limiter cap is designed to break along with the head of this screw if you try and fiddle with it and try and remove it there is a way to get it off now be really careful only do this at your own risk i'm just going to get a cigarette lighter on here and i'm going to warm it up all it is is some adhesive that's holding this down and uh, to get that out or to be able to adjust it we have to take this limiter off so I've just blown this off really well, and so it is dry. Again, you do so at your own risk. I do recommend something like a soldering iron. Don't get an open flame around a carb, all that sensible safety stuff, but uh, I am literally just gonna heat it up. And if you decide to put this back together with the limiter cap on, which I highly recommend to anyone that's gonna sell a piece of equipment so that people can't fiddle, um, use a retaining compound. I'm going to leave it off, but uh, the choice is yours. Start to see it bubbling out slightly, so that should be good to come off. Be really, there we go. Be really careful. I'll show you what I mean about this snapping. Let me uh, screw this in. Let's count how many turns in it is. I'll also show you the um, adhesive that they use. It's not a press fit, is it? It's an actual adhesive. Careful, of course, this is going to be warm. It's all flaking off now because it's all been heated up. Here it is. My fingers are covered in fuel. So this is the taper that they've put in there that's designed to snap. Where are you? If you fiddle, no, just bear that in mind. Do so at your own risk. Maybe you're just happy leaving it well alone. If it flows fuel cleanly or, or, or clearly, you can see. But of course, if you do need to take it out, uh, just double check that the drilling is nice and clear. We can even spray some more brake cleaner in there if we so wish, just to double check. It should come out of the drilling, which it does. Make sure that the needle is not damaged or deformed at the end. And make sure that it's clean. So this one looks really good. Nothing wrong with that at all. Last but not least, we have one more drilling. And it's this one here. It's actually on the face of the carb that mounts to the intake manifold. So we have our air filter this side our intake manifold this side all this does is allows the uh, float bowl to stay at atmospheric pressure okay so we'll just double check that that is clear again a bit of brake cleaner whatever you've got that will go straight into 
this area and you can see that that is clear as well so we've gone over everything this is the whole carb taken apart in its little bits i'm going to now pop this into an ultrasonic cleaner we're going to give it a really good clean and then we're going to start to put it back together and as bits go back together i'm going to further test them with some brake cleaner carb cleaner making sure that they're clean that the ultrasonic cleaner has done a good job and uh, we'll then test it out in the machine and make sure it runs Everything's oh no, don't forget the float. Turn it upside down. It's still warming up. All right, see you in 30 minutes. Well, it's actually been two hours. It ran for an hour, two 30 minute cycles. And I've just been out walking the dog. So we've just got back and uh, have a quick look. <laughs> it's a lot of junk in the bottom of that. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'll give everything a good wash out. There we go. Oh, that's really hot. Ah. Quick wash. Oh, the float bowl, yes. Come out pretty good. I'm going to give it a quick wash and see if that's uh, staining or... Yeah, no, that's staining. That's really clean. Carb is really nice and clean. Right, I'm going to give this a quick wash, blow out with some air, and then we're going to check all the drillings and make sure everything's good, and we'll reassemble it. And now for the process of reassembly. So we'll first check the pilot jet is clear. If I put um, my torch... Hopefully you can see that. So it is nice and clear. I'm going to lubricate that with just a little bit of four-stroke oil before it goes in. And it must go in, in the right orientation. You can't really get it wrong because it's got a flat spot to it. So it needs to go in there. We've got a flat spot. You're going to press that down. If you use lubrication, it will go in much easier. If you don't, you're going to be fighting it. Don't start trying to fight it. Bit of oil, you'll be good to go. We're going to put the screw back in. I'm not going to worry about the limiter cap for now. We were two and a half turns out. And leave that there. Leave the limiter cap to one side for now because I can always adjust it if I need to. Let's now put in the idle speed screw. If you haven't pressed down your pilot drilling or your pilot jet, then this one won't go in properly. We were just exposed by a millimeter or so. Motion tube, we'll just double check it's all nice and clean. If I put, I take the lid off my brake cleaner and I'm going to put this in the end, it's going to squirt you in the eyes. So gently push. Just check they're all nice and clear, nice and clean. Give it a blow out with some air. And that can then go back in. It goes in with the small end going in first. And then we're going to put our main jet. Again, we'll double check this is clear. Shine some light behind it. You can see right through that. That goes in. Use my modified screwdriver so it fits nicely. This is brass, so be nice and gentle with it. Just snug as all it needs. Don't overdo it. It's now in place. Now, before we go any further, let's double check this needle has come out really clean. Hmm, that still has some debris on it. That's not ideal. Let me try and clean it off with a little bit of brake cleaner. Certainly a bit better. I think that'll be okay. Maybe it was just still a little bit dirty. Right. We have our little spring, which goes on the end. That's cleaned up really nicely too. Now our float. That's come out really clean as well. There's nothing wrong with that. So we push the needle up 
compress that spring and then it should just slide on like so yeah and i'll just go behind with a little screwdriver there we go now it's clicked in place there so we'll just double check that seat make sure there's no debris or anything there it wasn't beforehand but it doesn't mean that it can't pick it up from the oxygen cleaner there's no damage no pitting or anything there's no embrittlement or cracks it looks really good but a little bit of petrol down there now that's just to wet it sometimes it needs a little bit of fluid for that needle to actually seat correctly put that on needle will slide into its hole our pins nice and clean now let's uh before we put that float bowl on, we just want to double check that this gasket, which has expanded slightly, it might be just fine. I'm not going to upset it. I'm going to leave it well alone. Now, the last thing to note is which direction the uh, bowl drain faces. I can't remember on this engine, so I'm going to put it back together and then I can just loosely uh, do so. And that way I can then turn it around and get it to seat really nicely. That is that way. So it's got to at least be outwards, whether it's that way or that way. I'm not certain yet, but that's fine. And the last thing to test is that the needle is actually seating. Let's screw the screw on. Don't need to go too crazy. And then last but not least, bowl drain. Again, don't go too crazy. Just snug is fine. And then the Mighty Vac. Let's see if it seals. It should do. There's no reason why it shouldn't. The needle wasn't horrendous, so upside down. Get to around about seven. Doesn't need to worry. There we go. You see that it's uh, holding. Now, if I turn it the other way, upside down, the float unseats or the needle unseats. We're back again. Perfect. So there we have it. Gone through everything you need to know. And uh, the more you can understand how fuel flows, how air moves throughout the carburetor, what does what, it will allow you to pinpoint the exact reasons as to why it might not be functioning correctly. So there we go. I hope it helped. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'll catch you soon.